brother, five brothers and one sister. Uh, coming up, you know, I, I like to play sports and football, basketball. You know, uh, junior high school to play football and basketball and stuff real good. You know, had you know had real good grades and stuff. You know, and I grew up in the church. You know, my mom you know took us to church on Sunday. Uh, when I got in junior high school. I started playing sports or whatever, you know, started getting known and stuff, you know. Went on to high school because I got recruited. And, uh, you know, I, I started uh, you know, hanging out with friends and stuff, you know. I started hanging out with a few guys that were doing things that, you know, you know, my parents didn't raise me up, you know, to do. And uh, I started, you know, drinking a little bit and, you know, using a little marijuana. You know, that was when I was in junior high school. And then went on to senior high school, you know, I played football still. You know, life was going pretty good for me, getting good grades and things like that. And uh, along the way, once I went to college, um, I still was doing good, playing football and things of that nature. But I started my, my addiction caused my use to start progressing and, and life started getting a little bit complicated for me as far as living life on life's terms because of the decisions that I made for us, you know, using drugs and alcohol. I started turning to that more than, you know, focusing on my goals in life. And my goal was to, you know, to be a successful person, you know, and uh, what happened was, uh, like I said, my addiction got to me and I ended up dropping out of school, came home to East St. Louis, Illinois. I went to school at the University of Whitewater, Wisconsin. That's the college that I went to. I went to high school at East St. Louis Senior High School. Uh, I got recruited for the football when I went to the University of Whitewater, Wisconsin. And all my uh, things and goals and things that I had set for myself, I set aside, you know, and it was like, you know, I started living a life, of uh, a negative life, you know, and uh, I found myself getting into a lot of trouble uh, for as the law is concerned, you know, I found myself, you know, you know, catching theft cases, you know, robbery charges and stuff like that because of my disease of addiction. I caught a case in 1995 and I had to do three and a half years in the penitentiary, you know, and I, I, I called myself and said, well, you know, I, I really don't like this way of living and I want to get it together, you know, and I, I tried to go through treatment and so forth when I was locked up. I got out in 2000, well, actually, 98 and I was doing well you know I was staying clean for a little bit you know and then I relapsed you know and I ended up catching another case in 2003 where I caught a 14 year sentence and that there told me yeah it's time to quit you know I said well you know I'm not going to keep living like life like this here you know so I went through treatment the whole time that I was locked up for six and a half years while I was locked up I attended college I said to myself that one of the goals that I wanted to do is be able to become a counselor. I decided after I got out of penitentiary to, to, to continue on into recovery, to the recovery program. I got me a sponsor. Uh, I started attending church at the Salvation Army. Uh, I went and applied for a job at the Salvation Army and started working for the Salvation Army. Lieutenant Katie had gave me an opportunity to work and, and, and then she encouraged me and uplifted me, you know, and, I, and I, I honestly believe that God, you know, has sent me there because I just feel like, you know, I wanted to give something back and I wanted to help others because, you know, I had got some help, you know, and I'm truly grateful for that, you know, and uh, the Salvation Army has been there for me, you know, uh, in need, in any time I needed anything or any, any type of help, you know, if they could assist me and, if, you know, if I was there before, they, they would help me, you know, and I'm truly grateful for that. You know, like I said, if you can't be, you might as well join them. So I felt like joining would be just doing the right thing for the right reason and living a, a, a Christian life, you know, and the help of the Salvation Army, I'm I'm feeling a lot better than I used to. I really, really, really am you know, so grateful because I can just, you know, remember and when I see people that come in from the Salvation Army, the people that are struggling with the disease of addiction, you know, it kind of touches me because I, I understand what they're going through because I've been there and I've done that. So I had a, a family member that worked for the Salvation Army for 34 years. Uh, his name was Chico Davis. And I said, well, you know what? You know, the Salvation Army is giving me a half and I figured, that, hey, I need to be down there volunteering and doing some work and helping some other people and helping them also because they helped me. Well, living here in East St. Louis, if I didn't have the Cyrus Norman to come to, I think I probably, you know, I, I, don't know I, need to say this, but I might be back where I was at before, you know, before because, like I said, you know, it, this is a small, it's not a big town, you know, and, uh, you know, I got a lot of friends and, and things that, that here in East St. Louis that, you know, that's doing you know, what I was doing in the past, you know, using and, and, and getting in trouble, but that's not what I choose to do, you know. So my decision was to come down to the Salvation Army, and I'm grateful that the Salvation Army is here because if it wasn't for the Salvation Army, 
there's a possibility that I could be doing the same thing that I did when I was, you know, getting in trouble back, you know, uh, in 2003. Thank you.